Crimpity, crimpity, now, now, crimpity, crimpity, ask me how. Crimpity, crimpity, humble pie. Crimpity, crimpity, boing. Ba, ba, boing, boing, take a fashion coin. <laughs> Slot it in the pocket of your bum bag. Take it to Milan, take it to Japan, take it to the man with the fashion plan. Jacquette. Come with us now on a journey through time and space. To the world of the Matipoche. You're a fan of the Mighty Bush? Yes. You're a, a Bush fan? Good. Biggest, you know. I nearly fainted when I found out they'd be on my birthday here at, in Los Angeles, in my home where I was born and raised. It's like Los Angeles's gift to me. Well, I'm more than happy to let someone else drive. I can't drive. I'm shit face. Ah! What's wrong with my eyes? There's nothing really wrong with them. It's just they're not a man's eyes, are they? They're more of a cockerel's eyes embedded in a man's face. Do you love me? Oh dear. Well, so what are we looking at right there? Old Greg. This is like the church of old Greg over here. Greg. Who are you here for? <laughs> Mighty <laughs> Boosh! How are you doing? Everybody look at the moon. Whoa! Everybody look at the moon. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome to Boing Boing Video. We have Julian Barrett and Noel Fielding, collectively, the Mighty Boosh. Boing Hi. Boing. What was Comic Con like for you? It was a bit like going to Disney World or something. It's quite weird. I felt about 12. It's like, oh, there's Ninja Turtles. And then, oh, look, there's a sort of woman dressed as a pirate. It's quite strange. And this is the first time for both mm. of you at Comic Con. Yeah. Don't you were very excited by a lot of things like that. I, yeah. I was less excited. There was no one dressed as Miles Davis for you. No one dressed as. <laughs> After a while, I was going a bit crazy. I wanted to get out in the woods. It was a bit sick, <laughs> get naked and howl. Yeah, you know, but, so it was so... Get back oh, to your primal self. Yeah. But I mean, I would think that the two of you would fit in comfortably there because... Yeah, I've never there's, felt... There's like Comic-Con every day where you are. I've never your felt fans. so underdressed in all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Someone gave me a cape, actually, which was really nice, a sort of velvet cape. And I wore that at one point, and I still felt painfully underdressed. Well, I mean, especially in the UK, your fans are notoriously mm. dedicated and dedicated to the art of costuming. Our gigs are a bit like Comic Con, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, people dress up. It's a bit Rocky Horror. Thanks to all my fans. Here in the US, it's like there's, there's still a smaller fan base, but the fan base is really, really serious. The photos that I've seen on Flickr, the, yeah. the stuff on Twitter, in, people are as crazy here as they are in the UK. what happened in England was that a lot of people are into the show, but they don't know other people are. When we had a gig, all these people came, it was rammed, there was like loads of people queuing, and, and they were like, well, what's going on? Why, who? I thought I only knew about this show. <laughs> yeah. sort of thing. Also, they want to express that they're the people that like the show the most. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, look at me, I'm actually dressed up. And, yeah. But then there's... They sort of become friends after a while, actually. It becomes like a weird sort of cult. separate cult from the actual cult. The fan cult versus the cult yeah. of the bush. Yeah, what and then they start to get angry when you do things differently. Yeah. yeah. Seriously? Well, they or can if get you a give attention bit. to some other, other fans fan, who are you know, It's like, you know, we know you more than they know you. Right. Yeah. We're at the gigs. <laughs> it gets really well, violent at our gigs. What, what is this? It's old Greg. It's a, one of the watercolors that he does in the, in the show. And I just got back from the signing, so they actually signed it all for me. How were the fans? here different than in the UK, if, if there is a notice Taller. Difference. They're taller, better looking. <laughs> better teeth. <laughs> no, uh, they're yeah, better they're teeth. They're, they're same, aren't they? They're they're same, the same. Yeah, they feel the same. Mm -hmm. they feel, it feels very similar when you do a gig. I mean, we've never really changed what we do, I suppose, so to to get a, to, to sort of chase an audience. So I suppose what, whatever we do gathers a certain type of... We've never chased an audience. We've never chased <laughs> we an audience. Chase an Maybe audience. we should, yeah. yeah. We'd well, love just, to catch that when you do go chasing and running after the audience. <laughs> give them a minute to leave the venue and then <laughs> chase them some <laughs> the microphone. Yeah. Come back. Who's hey, up inside ya? Find it an entrance where they can. Who's hey, up inside ya? Find it an entrance where they can. Bore it for you, tell me for you, my for your anus. How does music play into the, the creation of your work? I mean, do you sometimes um, hear a song or sort of hear about a band, you're exposed to something and that works its way into the story or yeah. is it sort of the other way around? We write characters and, and we think what kind of music would they be into? What you know especially funny okay. if it's a sort of sea creature or yeah. you know or a, a mythical fox. beast of some sort and you think is he into jazz or is he into sort of the crack fox you just thought would have a band. Electro. 
Okay, let's have fun. Yeah, that's not the film I meant to show. That's the nighttime film for me and the night times for the fuzzy tingle time. Yeah, and old Greg was... He became, as we wrote it, he became a more of a sort of Rick James sort of <laughs> type <laughs> character, and he was a, yeah, living on the sea. He needs to make us laugh, I think, the sort of type of music that, that this character's into. I just did an interview with Downbeat magazine. Pretty good, eh? Amazing. <laughs> yeah. no, but, you know, in England, I've been banging on about jazz for ages. You know, and not <laughs> You're not joking. You really did do an interview with Downbeat. Yeah, just yeah, now. Just wow. now. But it took, it took me to come over here for a week to do an interview with Downbeat. But I've been going on about it for ages in England. But no magazines or anyone's been interested in talking to me about jazz. I wonder why that is. <laughs> I've read in interviews in the past where you talk about making the show for yourselves as opposed to, I guess, making a product or trying to imagine what other people would mm. want. It, it really does. There's a kind of a gentleness, right? A kind of playfulness. Mm. I've, I've heard some critics even describe your show as a children's show mm. for adults. The yeah. Yeah. The kind of like an adult fairy tale. Sure, it's kids are pretty open, you know. Sure, it's a sort of kids don't have a problem with the weirdness of it or the magicalness or the sort of. Uh... Bouncy, bouncy. Ooh, Whereas kids are just like, yeah, fine. Oh, Greg's got a mangina. Yeah, cool. Okay, what happens? <laughs> what happens <laughs> next? <laughs> A lot of writers who are struggling to describe the show to people who haven't seen the show, mm. uh, they have to throw drugs in there somewhere. Right? Yeah. Like this is a this is an LSD induced, peyote induced, whatever. Yeah. I guess I can it's see that. Strange that, but, isn't it? Yeah. We sort of, the idea of doing drugs when you're writing would be just awful, <laughs> absolutely awful. <laughs> you wouldn't, you'd want to do anything but writing, wouldn't you? Just be wandering around in the forest, then. showing off your mind. <laughs> you wouldn't be going, hey, let's write. That. An episode, it's quite yeah, difficult. Yeah, like a really tightly structured episode. It's like homework writing an episode, it's like maths, it's like really ruined, it's like, you know, your brain's bleeding. I, I think a lot of people hearing you say this now would be very surprised if, if they're fans of the show. That, that kind of loose, playful, I mean seemingly improvisational vibe of the show. To set up a man who's a sort of sea monster with a vagina is quite difficult. <coughs> it's quite, it's not, you know. <laughs> You're writing about, you know, I don't know, a racing driver. Everyone knows sure. what that is, but you have to sort of set the, the rules or the parameters and then muck about with them. Sure. There's a lot of set-up in our show, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unwill us to the mighty love.